In verse 14, let's read it. For the kingdom of heaven is like a what? A man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one. To each one according to his what? What is that? A parameter, isn't it? And immediately he went on a journey, and when he had re then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. I would say that he had the, five, the three parameters that were established, ability, character, and what? Attitude. And his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He who also had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. See, I, I want you to look at this as it's not the amount. It's the obedience. See, it's not how much and how many. It's about doing what you're supposed to do with what he's given you. If everybody would just begin to complete what God has given you and the ability with the parameters of Christ's character and attitude, we would all walk in more unity. We would advance in more places instead of the right hand trying to be another right hand. Instead of the left foot trying to be another left foot. Hello. If we will just obey in the area of be in position and fulfill the function that God is asking us to require, asking us to do, and do it with all of your heart and labor unto the Lord. And don't look at anybody else. Don't look at what he or she or whatever and do what God has called you to do, there would be more unity. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's continue. And his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received two talents, oh, no, then he who had received, in verse 24, the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Now, I want you to understand that God know, knew this individual. So he only gave him one talent to do. The one he knew that was able to do five, he gave five. The one he was able to do two, he gave two. But the one he knew that was able to do one, he gave it to him also. So he wasn't placing the burdens upon him to do more than what was expected of him. He gave him one talent. Hallelujah. And verse 25, and he said, I was a what? Afraid, there's that fear again. And went and hid your talent into the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. So he was all thinking, yeah, man, I, I didn't lose it. That's what you call an idiot. Spiritually ignorant. Well, I didn't lose it. I have won. Now look at what the Lord says. <laughs> but his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. <laughs> you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own interest with interest. 
Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Obviously, God was a little upset with him. <laughs> now, the Bible says this, that in this arena, God will not hold anything good back from you unless you're not doing what he tells you to do. He will begin to hold things back. Amen? He'll hold things back till you begin to get positionally functioned so that you're back into your function again. Because sometimes we're not listening. We're so caught up in ourself. So the only thing that's gaining our attention are the things on the outside of us or our surrounding areas. Or then circumstances have to speak to us instead of his voice. Amen. Now, circumstances can speak to you. So if circumstances are speaking to you, I encourage you to wake up. And get positionally functioned so that you can function in a position that God has given you all the way through so that you will hear good and faithful servant enter into the joy of your Lord and as we go on the road to Zion this is essential because we will advance further it's the arena of unity And in this arena of unity, if we all do our part, our function will advance quicker, stronger, and enjoy. It will not be burdensome to you. Amen? We are in a critical time. Again, I can't emphasize enough. 2010 is going to be a really arena of a decision year. It's going to be a tremendous decision year for many people. And it's going to be an area of exposure to the area of if they're fulfilling their function, if they're out of position. It is a great time. It's an awesome time to be alive here, though, so that we can see the move of God. You know? You know, when, when the wave is moving and things are happening, and, you know, you, that's all you do is you catch the wave and you just cruise. But, you know, sometimes you got to paddle to catch the wave. Amen? You got to put effort in it. So there's a time of paddling to catch the wave and it takes you to a place and then the wave settles and then you have to paddle. And in that paddling, God is dealing with you. It's just like going from valley to mountaintop. You know, one of the things I always saw in the valley to mountaintop areas, do you, do you, you know, there, in electricity, there's alternating current and there's direct current, DC and AC. Now, you, if you've all had a radio and you've listened to it and you only had AM stations, that's associated with direct current in, in an area of, of waves. So that when you go under a bridge, you lose the radio station, don't you? You, you lose the contact. Amen. But then you have the um, other frequency, I should say, that's oscillating, that when you go under a bridge, it... It goes through. You don't lose the radio station, do you? Amen? It's the same thing as the mountaintop experiences in the valleys. But there's one thing that we must maintain. Joy. Joy all the way through. No matter whether you're on the mountaintop or in the valley, you must. Because see, you don't change on the mountaintop. You change in the valley. See, everybody thinks they change in the mountaintop. Woo! Yeah! Oh! oh. No, you're not changing. You change in the valley. The mountaintop is a break. <laughs>